Hello, everybody. Welcome to the NRC Round 3 Wrap at Rugby.com.au. Here with Mr. Stephen Hoyles. Marty, how are you? Very well, mate. Thank you very much for joining us once again. Heading straight into the action, the first game of Round 3 was between the Rams and Perth Spirit. Yeah, look, it was a good start again by the Perth Spirit on the back of John O'Lance, who's been the standout player. He was player of the tournament, in fact, last year playing for New South Wales Country Eagles. Showed a lot of control in this game. Uh, the Rams, look, they're always going to keep fighting. That's one of the, the big improvers or improvements in their game this year. But just unfortunately, um, up against the Perth Spirit side who you know, needed this to stay in contention in the, in the top four. Yes, well, the Rams have lost three on the trot now. They're sitting just above Queensland Country in the bottom of the ladder. But as you said, they were in this game and they've been in all three so far this season. Yeah, well, compared to the first two seasons when they had a few tries scored against them, they tended to let the floodgates open. But they've got a really good forward pack, a couple of big guys. You know, Willie Skelton's played last two weeks with them. A good, skillful back row. Um, but again, they're just up against probably too many Super Rugby players. That the first spirit the Those couple of tries as well, heading into half time to the spirit, really put the dampener on them at the break. They came out pretty good. Mitch Walton here, he came on in the second half. He's added a lot of spark to the Rams as well. Yeah, again, the, the key positions that they probably need a little bit of help on are in for mine. They've got a good pack and they're using them, but you'd like to see them play it with a little bit more width. Moving ahead to the second Saturday game for the round, and it was the Rays up against Queensland Country up at Bond Uni, top versus bottom. Yeah, again, top versus bottom after you know a couple of rounds doesn't mean too much. We're only just starting to see, you know, some side streak away. They needed to win this game, Queensland Country. Good start, you know, no tries for the first 25 minutes. They crossed the line and they looked as though they were in control. You know, we're five minutes from half time and all of a sudden it goes against the run of play. The Rays run 80 metres and, and managed to, to put two tries on in the last five minutes of the first half. So disappointing finish. Nice work from Cam Clark there. Jumped over from the Australian Sevens program. So. Another tough loss for Queensland Country. They fight hard, and I'd, I'd love to see them become a little bit more competitive. They've got some good young players in their side, but at the same time, I'm enjoying seeing the Sydney Rays, who have uh, just started to you know, pick up a, few, a bit of momentum. A lot of these guys play for North Sydney in the Sydney Club Cup this year, so um, they're in good form. Like you said, those two tries on half-time really did kill Queensland Country, and the Rays were again the first ones to cross in the second half. It's a bit of a shame because, like you said, the country team has so much talent and obviously they're coached by Toto Kefu and Brad Thorne. So much experience amongst those two, but yeah, they're just struggling to get the points. Yeah, they're probably the equivalent of the, the Rams in, in Queensland for me, the, the, in the Queensland country. They're close, always had a good set piece, um, but uh, you see in this competition, you, you need to pick up a few wins early on and if you can, like the Rays have done, becomes really like a big momentum shift and they're enjoying their time now whereas the Queensland country you know hopefully they keep fighting and fighting and, and pick up that win. Let's see what uh, head coach Todd Kefu had to say after the match. I think uh, there were some silly turnovers, um, um, some bad decision making so uh, things that uh, we control so um, you know, we can we can fix those things. Um, there was a period, probably five minutes before half time and after half time, wasn't wasn't too good. We I think we bled two or three tries there. So, um, but you know, uh, for example, you know we got the ball out to the width a couple of times and, and we kicked away possession probably three or four times. So that's not that's not something we want to be, make a habit. We, you know, we want to build pressure by holding onto the ball. And looking at the Super Rugby radar, Hoylesy, there's a hooker leading the try tally. Yeah, Paying Aramosa from the Rams. Uh, he's actually named a couple of times off the bench, but, but Hugh Roach has been un unavailable for the last two weeks, and he scored some really good tries. He's a big body, so he's someone who knows how to find the try line. And for the Queensland country, Hoylesy Parise. Yeah, we saw him last year in the Bill Corp NRC. He's still a young man. Had a lot of injuries, I've, I've been led to believe, and he's, uh, he's got some sharp feet on him, pretty dangerous. And the early rounds we got to see him last year, he was excellent, so it's really nice to see him carrying the form that we saw briefly last year into this year's Bill Corp NRC. And he'll be hoping to get some time with the Queensland Reds in 2017, no doubt. And also for the UC Vikings, Hoylesy, Andrew Robinson. Yeah, Andrew's been you know, in this Brumbies junior system for a long, long time. Actually played for the Sydney Stars last year. Gone through Australian schoolboys, Australian 20. So, you know, people will be pretty familiar with, with what he's done in and around the junior team. So it's really nice to see him stepping up to that next level and, and putting some pressure on him. Maybe some Super Rugby teams are starting to hopefully take note. There's plenty of players that might be on the Super Rugby radar, but also national coach Michael Check is keeping a keen eye on all the action in the NRC. The NRC is proving to be a real uh, uh, hidden treasure for us, you know, because guys like Willie Skelton, uh, Luke Moran, uh, Tom Robertson, you know, even though he had to make a dash at half time of the game to get here because uh, of the flights, etc. 
and we really appreciate that from the NRC teams, how they've been working with us to give our guys, even though they may not be at training as much time uh, all week, as much time as they possibly can. I know the, the Rams have done that with Willie and, and Melbourne have done that as well. So there's been um, lots of opportunity for guys to play footy even when they've been in camp. Looking now at the two Sunday games, Hoylsey, the first one, City up against the Vikings. You're, of course, never available. Yeah, lovely, lovely day for rugby. It was terrible conditions the, the night before for the Test match, but at Ballymore it was uh, the conditions were perfect, uh, and it was a really good start from Brisbane City, uh, the two-time premiers. Big Nasi Rani, the Fijian flanker, did a lot of good work to get this ball down, but a lovely little trick shot around the front. Tommy Stanaforth working really well there with Robbie Abel. The UC Vikings were just, um, you know, they were just more determined. Sometimes you watch a game of rugby and you try and pinpoint what it was, but you know they scored Brisbane a lot of points in the end, but the defence was very, very good, and um, this guy, Tom Staniforth, was excellent. Jordan Jackson-Hope had a solid game. Um, no TMO here, but they give the try anyway, and I'm happy with that. It didn't waste any time. Lovely watching a game of rugby up in um, Ballymore. Always is nice conditions. This was probably one of the disappointing things for the UC Vikings. Yeah, Jordan Jackson-Hope didn't need to throw the ball away there, but Kurundrani swoops on it and scores a lovely try. That was probably you know, the last threatening bit of play from Brisbane City. The rest of it was all UC Vikings, as I said. They, um, they defended really, really well, so good on them. Like you said, when the City got that last try before half-time, you thought they might have been able to come out in the second 40 and really take it to the Vikings. But as you see here, the, the only team that really showed up after the break was the Vikings. Yeah, you've got to remember that the Brisbane City side that's won it for the last couple of years uh, he's missing, he's a different side to the side we've seen at the moment. No Liam Gill, no Scott Higginbotham, Samu Karevi, Junior Lalawifi, Karma for Hunter. So many players not playing at the moment. And nice to see Sam Carter get rewarded after you know, a really good performance, 80th minute. Exhausting day. This is where the sort of floodgates opened a little bit. Class there between Robbie Coleman and Henry Spate. So that was the difference in the end. Just uh, a little bit more desperate in defence, and the class sort of uh, outshone the, the home side. And of course, the Horn Little Shields now found a new home down in Canberra too. Brisbane City giving that up on the weekend. Straight into the last game for the round, and it was the Eagles taking on the rising up in Tamworth Hoyles. Yeah, I love seeing the game go out to regional areas. So. Well done to the Country Eagles for taking it to Tamworth. Two Tamworth boys playing in this game, actually. One from each side, Mick Snowden, the rising number nine, and Paddy Ryan, the Country Eagles captain. But it was Tolu Latu who's been in excellent form for the Country Eagles. He was uh, really, really good. They started very well. Ben Mean got him back into the, the game, the rising, that is. A nice little individual try there. He's playing number 10, which is a little bit out of position for him. We normally see him playing halfback. But again, Country Eagles have been in, in really good form. They'll be disappointed with their second half, but um, they got the win, they go undefeated and they face the other undefeated side in the Sydney Rays this weekend. Like you said, it was a game of two halves, no doubt. The Eagles really coming out firing in that first half in front of the home crowd. But this second 40 that we see here, the Rising were the only team to score. Yeah, there you see the homeboy Mick Snowden getting a try in front of mum and dad. It was a good day for him, but they just let up too big a lead, that's the thing. Nice little ball over the top, a few people thought it was forward. Andrew Deegan blowing up, but the try's been awarded. And again, Darren, Darren Coleman, the coach of the Country Eagles, will be, will be happy. They had a nice big night in Tamworth, I hear. They celebrated with the locals, but they've got plenty to do this weekend. They're up against, as I said, top of the table clash. And we'll hear from Zane Hilton now, the coach of the Melbourne Rose. You know, we're really, really pleased with our second half group and the fight to come back at it. But the reality of it is you can't leave yourself uh, all the work to do in the second half and then come back at it and, and you know, put yourself under pressure at key moments and, and not be able to execute. And the Rising weren't just putting points on the scoreboard in the second 40 Hoyles, he mate. They were relocating some ribs. Yeah, well, there was this two-minute passage of play. There was about three or four massive hits. Two of them from Sam Jeffries. I haven't seen that much or well, that part of his game, but I really, really enjoyed it, as does everyone. When you see a two-metre tall, big red-headed second row fly off the line and smash someone twice in 90 seconds, that's good for the game. There's just huge amounts of hits, and it was probably a... You know, a signal that the Rising were a little bit disappointed with how they were playing, so they're aiming up in defence. Let's hope it continues in the next few weeks. Let's check it out now. Sweet on the field. Oh, another one Jeffries. from Jeffries. He is lining them up here. Fig goes out the back now. Here's Godwin. Police. Well, Sam Jeffries has the laser sight nice and oh, oh. dialed in. That's it from us here for the NRC Round 3 Wrap at Rugby.com.au. If you did miss any of the action, remember you can catch the full match replays on Rugby.com.au's video page. Thanks for joining me, Hoyles. Always a pleasure, Marty. We'll leave you now with the best shots from around the grounds. <laughs>